Hey guys, this is uh, Kevin Hibbert again with uh, Second Offense, and uh, we're just kind of kind of run through a little rundown of uh, what I do on a typical day of fishing out here for marlin, tunas, whatnot. Um, more specifically for blue marlin, um, all these fish will eat the same stuff that we've got put out here on the table. Um, but with my luck and with uh, um, what I like to run out here, especially in Kona, we've got a lot of flat, flat water and we want to make a lot of commotion and stuff. Uh, a typical pattern for me, again, um, I, I run four lures. I keep it simple. I don't run a shotgun. I don't want run one down the middle. Um, but my typical pattern consists of four lures, uh, three pushers, and one jet or bullet. Um, this is what we consider a bullet or a jet, and obviously you can see why, because of the shape of it, it looks like a bullet. Uh, here's another one with a regular uh, rubber skirt on it. And then this one has become quite popular. This skirting material is a flashaboo. Um, kind of started off as being used for streamers and stuff like that on uh, tarpon flies, uh, snook flies, and stuff like that. And it slowly kind of got incorporated into the um, offshore world and its success has been pretty radical so you'll start to see a lot of this colors on boats in Hawaii, uh, Costa Rica, Cabo, stuff like that. Um, it's a bit harder to tie um, on your lure and make and stuff like that. You know, if you feel first time doing it you'll look like a five-year-old just had a party with confetti at a strip club. Um, anyway, um, my positions typically go from biggest to big, a little smaller to smaller. And the reason I do that is the fish, especially our big fish here, seem to be attracted to the boat right off the bat. You know, they, they feel the, the, the movement of the boat, the vibrations, uh, the, the, all the white water moving around, which could be a school of fish. So they typically come up to the boat first, see if there's anything to eat there. Uh, then they fall back and lo and behold, there's our weak and the injured trying to keep up with the school. So I want to make as much commotion close to the water. Typically that's going to be a bigger lure with a bigger face on it and stuff. Uh, this is what we would call a tube lure. As you can see, it's basic, basic, basic. It's basically kind of how it all started in the beginning with the lure makers of Henry Chi and George Parker and stuff like that. Most of their lures were tubes, just simple. You know, simplicity was at its finest back then uh, with a little bit of belly weight in it and just to keep it so it's riding nice and good. But a lure like this is gonna throw a lot of water in what we call molehill you know, or, um, you know, it's, it's running underwater, it's pushing a bunch of smoke behind it and then it'll come up with a massive spray on it and that while it's running under the surface just a little bit, it'll have a, a rise and that's where we get the, the term the molehill. Um, these lures, when they pop, the, the whole scenario for the deal um, will just kind of, kind of inform you on it or, or educate you on what these lures do. A lot of people look at a lure like this and they think it's going to run like that. And that's a lot of from fishing in freshwater and stuff and using like your Rapalas or a swimming lure with a lip on it and you would think it would run as so. Uh, it, Obviously, um, it runs this way. Um, so when these these lures are running in the water behind the boat, and they're pushing a big, big plume of water, as soon as it comes up, poof, makes a splash, and goes back underwater, when it displaces that water, now there's an air bubble that encases this lure. So you're actually not seeing this lure as it is right now, as you see it, as it's running behind the boat. Um, when it's running behind the boat and it comes up and grabs that, pushes that water and grabs that air and it goes back down, there's actually this lure is in, inside of a, a teardrop shape of air. And while it's under there, you'll see the big smoke trail being released out from underneath it. And that's from the wiggle and all that stuff from the lure as it's, it's traveling. As soon as that air bubble starts to dissipate and get smaller, that's when the lure comes back up, poof, pops again, goes back down. 